Beauty, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. However, what I do know is that today is very winter, spring, icy, cool, yet refreshing look has been achieved with this here Colourpop Mint to Be palette. The latest incarnation of their nine pan monotone palettes. So, if you would like to see just exactly how well or not this palette performs, then my friend you are in precisely the right place. Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, and enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Right, I would have shown you in the intro that we are using. I know, I know I wasn't going to buy any more of these. And I really wasn't. I was going to be good. I was going to, not going to buy any more. And then this one came up on Depop. And I'm just like, it's so pretty. I've left the thingy on the mirror so I don't blind you. Just look. It's so pretty. And I really liked the lilac one they did and the peach one they did. So I'm kind of, I think I'm falling down the rabbit hole. Anyway, uh, this is still a teaching channel, so if I go too slowly for you, there is a speed widget up there. Please feel free to use it and speed me up. My chronic pain means I cannot blend very quickly anyway. That, combined with the fact that I want absolute beginners to be able to follow along step by step and keep up with me, Blending doesn't happen very quickly. Not anymore, anyway. Right. Face is washed, moisturised, SPF'd and primed. I've actually got three different primers on my face today. I've got uh, no problem on my nose and the middle of my forehead here and the middle of my chin. On my cheeks and down the flanks of my face. I have got um, the Milk Hydro Grip, which is so weird because it feels so sticky. Um, and then over that, over everything, I have got my usual antiperspirant primer, details of which are in the film that I've always got listed in my description um, box. The trick with that antiperspirant primer Put all your other primers on first, let them dry, let them soak in, go and have a coffee, empty the washing machine, reload the washing machine, I don't know, and then come back and then put a very, very thin layer of the antiperspirant primer and I find that the thinner layers work much, much better than thicker layers do. Um, and if you put the antiperspirant primer on first, if you then need to put a different primer on because you need to do some pore filling or extra moisturising or colour correcting primers, whatever, you can find it will peel up. Whereas if you put that one on after the others, it doesn't tend to happen. Let's get you zoomed in. Uh, on my eyes are as or are is as usual my Crow and Pebble uh, primer. I do have a discount code for that. I do not earn from it. I just earn pebbles that I can then offset against um, future purchases that I make. All of my discount codes are clearly listed in the description box and they all clearly state if I earn from them or not. Right. I'm just going to quickly talk you through the difference between hooded lids and deep set eyes because they suffer similar issues 
but the workarounds for them are very different and I hear so many people say oh I've got hooded lids and I'm looking at them thinking no you've got deep set eyes love there's a difference when I look straight ahead with my brows relaxed i.e. not up here you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner so I don't have hooded lids it's only if your upper lid completely covers right down to the lash line part or all of that mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye I'm going to demonstrate with this eye oh yeah you know why I should think hey <clears throat> I'm going to demonstrate with this eye because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I can make sure that I'm still on camera and in focus. If I cover the mobile lid, the visible mobile lid, sorry, relax my brow properly, there we go, and close my eye, you can see I've got as much, if not more, space that tucks back away out of sight. And if I cover the visible static lid and do the same, you can see. There's a lid space there that tucks back in and it's those two lid areas rubbing together that give me the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour, particularly shimmers, onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket line. And if I decide to wear glitters, even with glitter glue, I get bare patch right through the middle. Now, the workarounds for the two different types of eyes are very different. If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, and sketch out on your static lid where you want your crease to fall. Now this will reduce the space between the crease and the brow, so just use slightly smaller blending brushes or take the colour right up to the brow rather than leaving a gap like I normally do. You'll see me if I'm doing an editorial look or a more dramatic look, I will take the colour up to the brow anyway. There's no law says you cannot do that, all right? If, however, like me, you've got deep set eyes, what we have to do, whatever colour we're putting through our crease, usually the deepest shade, we just have to sort of stop and relax and just make sure we've brought it up high enough that it can be seen when our eyes are open. Right. I'm going to try a different shaped brush from Blush Tribe. These handles are gorgeous, look at this. Whee. I did get sent these for free. They were a gift. Right, you can see I have not even swatched this. It is untouched. So, I'm going to go in with the, let's see, there's one, two, three, four, there's five mattes and four shimmers. I quite like that balance. And there are no pressed glitters. However, Mojito Mummy in the middle here is listed as not so for the immediate eye area. So basically it might stain. Or if you have super sensitive eyes it may irritate them. They only have to put that on there because they sell it in America. If you're just selling it in Europe you wouldn't have to do that because they're they're fine, we can call them eyeshadows over here. Right, so I'm going to dip into Get Fresh. Get Fresh at the weekend show now. Who remembers that song? Who can remember who sang that song? Okay, quite a bit of kick up. I'm going to start off. Ooh, okay, this brush is far too loose. That's for blending out the edges. Right, I'm going to go in with this one. It's clean, it's just stained. Let's go back in to get fresh. That one was slightly too loosely packed. That's more for blending edges out than actually applying colour. There we go. And you can see I'm doing circular movements. I'm holding the brush right at the end to put as little pressure on as possible. And I don't put very much pigment onto the brush. I tend to tap a little bit back off again because I'd rather build it up gently and have less fallout even though obviously I'm doing my base afterwards, my foundation and everything. I still wouldn't, don't want to waste stuff by having fallout. 
So, circular movements in this direction towards the nose, bit of a bounce when you hit the middle, and then reverse the direction to come back out again. Now the reason I do that, that's actually quite nice. Although on my paper white skin it's not totally obvious, but it has laid colour down, that's good. Um, the reason I do this is because ugh, I'm 45, I'll be 46 in May. Um, my eyelids move, I've lost, you know, 14 stone, which is just under 200 pounds. Possibly more than that, because I have had a couple of people say to me it looks like I've lost more weight. But I haven't jumped on the scales for a while, so... I wouldn't know. I can't confirm that either way, folks. Um, so yeah, I have loose eyelids, and by doing it like this, you're ever so gently moving the skin of the eyelid around, so you don't get those telltale white stripes. Now, you can see here on this eye, I've got super, super deep creasing. There, you can actually see the striping there already. Now. That eye I do struggle with because it got pulled around when I was five years old at the ophthalmic. Yes, 40, nearly 41 years ago, uh, people pulling my eye around to try and find out why I wasn't seeing out of it properly has left me with super deep creasing. Do not muck your skin on your eyes around. It is as sensitive as tissue paper. So with this eye, I do have to stretch it out when I'm doing shimmers and stuff otherwise the um, the powder just packs loosely into the crease rather than being blended on and then as I move my eye through the day it all sort of cascades down and just horrible so so far this is actually really pretty um, I'm not going to bother cleaning the brush because I'm just going in with another shade of mint and I think I'll go in with I'll go in with de Month, as in creme de Month, or de Menthe, as everyone in America seems to call it. It's de Month, folks, with the drink. I'm just going to pop this a bit lower down on the eye. So how's your weekend been, or how is your weekend going to be? See, I'm recording this on a Saturday, but this will most likely go up on Tuesday. So how was your weekend? Was it good? Did you get up to anything exciting? What's the weather like with you? I know I've had a couple of my four family send me pictures through Insta showing me that they've already got snow where they are, and I'm just like, Ugh looks super super cold there because um, I never used to mind the cold I was the sort of person well, years of playing rugby in shorts and stuff it was you know if it started snowing I'd be out in my short sleeve t-shirt and my shorts getting the washing off the line it didn't bother me um, but I have noticed that since I've had fibre I feel the temperature a lot a lot more It seems to have a greater effect on me. So if it's slightly cold, I feel like I've been sat in a deep freeze for a week. And if it's slightly warm, it's like my body's forgotten how to con to regulate my temperature. It's like I'm a baby again. I just cannot regulate my temperature. I either get too hot or too cold. There doesn't seem to be a happy medium anymore. But, um, you know, these things are sent to try us. I just hope that when I eventually hit the menopause, I hope I hit it during the cold months, because I'd probably do with the hot sweats then, can I? Okay, these colours are blending together really nicely. I mean, in my viewfinder, you can't really see a huge difference between those two colours. Um, but in real life, in my mirror, you can see that this is deeper than the first shade that we put on. Really pretty. Right, I'm just going to clean this brush. I always use a clean washcloth. Um, I found that using colour switches are far too harsh on your brushes, especially if you're using natural hair. I mean, these are synthetic, but if you use a natural hair brush, 
colour swatches will kill it. Okay. I'll just check that this has got no residual colour on it. Giving it a quick wipe. Oh look, I think you can now actually, in my viewfinder at least, I can see the difference between the two colours now. That's good. Hopefully when I'm editing this I'll be able to see the colours a bit better anyway. Because obviously it films in HD but the viewfinder isn't HD. Right, I'm going to go into Chill Factor. Which is the deepest green in the palette. I've gone for a slightly smaller blending brush this time. And I'm going to do teeny tiny tiny little circles along that crease and back again just make sure I pulled it up high enough and add a little bit more pigment and just repeat so nice gentle gently does it backwards and forwards until you get a really nice soft blend there. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to grab that first brush that I used. I'm just going to use that very lightly where those two colours meet just to soften it. Can you see what I mean about how where this one is a much looser packed brush with longer bristles it's much better at just diffusing colour than actually laying colour down. Let's diffuse that really nicely. Just have a quick slurp, my throat feels very dry. Don't worry, <clears throat> it's a silicon straw. I'm just going to pop a little bit of that same shade just on the outer edge of my mirror lid just to create a little bit of definition to the eye hopefully you can see the difference now <clears throat> I do always um, like to sit back and check that both eyes look symmetrical because unlike a certain Jimmy Chuck we know who I'm talking about <clears throat> I don't photoshop my looks. What you see is absolutely achievable because it's what I've done. The most you'll find me doing is because I film with a combination of natural daylight because my, my kitchen is southeast facing so I film the windows actually over there uh, so I have the natural daylight flooding in but I also have um, LED strip lights, which you can probably see reflected in my eye there, behind the camera. Um, sometimes if the, the weather is very changeable with the sun coming in and out of a cloud, um, I do have to tweak the brightness on the film. But that's literally all I'll ever do. <clears throat> Again, going back in with the more loosely packed brush just to diffuse that edge a bit more. This is a really pretty look. I do, I'm, I'm really liking the sort of monochrome looks. Although that being said, I'm still going to be the sort of person that puts, you know, eight different colours on. It very much depends on my mood because I've got three different palettes that have arrived this one and two others and trying to decide which one to film with this morning was a bit of a nightmare so I ended up choosing this one because Everyone says to me, oh, you know, you should have so many more subscribers than you have, and 
I'm like, yeah, but the thing is, as all these big YouTubers always say, tutorials don't get the views. And of course my whole channel is tutorials. So I thought I'd use the most recently released palette first. In the hopes that people are searching for that one. And perhaps I might pop up in their suggested page. I can hope. Right, I always get more fallout this side than this side because the size looser. But as you can see, dusts away nicely without any issue. Right. Now this is a Jeffree Star Morphe lip brush. It's stained, it's clean. This is a JS24, but I love it because it's great for getting into the corners there. Now, regular viewers will know that first time I use a palette, I don't use um, I don't do a cut crease. Fibro fog in action there, folks. Because I want to see how much depth the, sh the, the shimmers have. I nearly said something completely different then. I'm just going to swatch the four that are in this palette. So that's Play It Cool, Mint Tea, Mojito Mami, and Freshman. And if I just This one looks more like a topper shade. Doesn't appear to have as much um, base colour to it. But those are great for doing sort of in a corner or along here. Now, never go into a pressed pigment or shadow with a wet brush. You will cause hard pan, you will give yourself major issues and you will probably end up completely killing the colour. Because although you can scrape the hard pan off for a few times, after a while it completely soaks down through the pigment and wrecks it. I'm just giving this a good old rub on the um, flannel or washcloth just to make sure there's no residual colour on this because obviously I did use quite a dark shade the other day. Okay. So I'm going to go into mint tea. Wow, these are super, super soft the minute you put a brush in. So be super careful with them. So, coated both sides of the brush, and then I'm going to use this just to wet the brush. Now, this isn't actually photo focus priming water spray anymore. Um, what it is, I had one of those awful sprays from. Ugh, I think it's completely gummed this up. I'm going to have to use a different spray. Fabulous. Um, I have one of those sprays from uh, Obsession, Makeup Obsession, that had all the glitter bits in it. Hated it. So I sort of let all the glitter bits sink to the bottom and then pulled it off into that. But I think there must still be some glitter in there because it's got gum in the pipe up. Right. So I've wet both sides of this and I've dried this ferrule off here. I'm just going to, I used a bit of um, slay all day to wet the brush. I 
that's really pretty. That's a really, really, really pretty shade. So I'm just going to dry the brush off. And then go back in. Repigment the brush. Just to prove I am using my slay all day. And it's in scent jasmine. And as I was saying, with this eye, I do actually have to stretch it out. But what you will notice is that I'm not stretching it out any further than I absolutely need to. So I'm not sort of like dragging it out to my ear roll. And as soon as I'm comfortable that I've got all of that deep creasing covered, I'm letting go. So only, only do that if you're like me and you have that super deep creasing already. Otherwise you will give yourself super deep creasing and I promise you, you will hate it because it gets worse and worse and worse. Right, clean the brush off. Such a pretty shade, really is. And now I'm going to go into Freshman. Which looks almost exactly the same on the brush. Fabulous. Let's see how it looks on the eye. Okay, well you can see a bit of a difference between them. Not as much of a difference as I would have liked there to have been. I would have liked this to have been a tad deeper and more, more like the colour that it actually appears in the pan. But it's still very pretty dried off but I mean if you compare it to how deep that looks in the pan not quite sure how I feel about that yet Obviously, because I don't have the deep creasing at this end, just super super mobile lid, <laughs> I don't need to do any tugging on the lid this time. What I'm going to do is just use the tip of the bristles just to kind of blur where those two shades meet on the lid. And then again, just where it meets the matte shade. Okay, so far, so good. Right, I am going to pause you while I go and bung some foundation and base products on, etc. And then I will be back to finish off this eye look. Now, my darlings. For you, this is going to be instant. However, I'm going to have to wait until the next time I press record in order to speak to you again. So I'll see you right now. Hey, Leo. So I kind of uh, dragged my green brow pomades out, and the green one's gone very, 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 very dry. Mental note, don't buy Colourpop ones again. 
technically it's a gel eyeliner, not a brow pomade, but you know. Right, I'm going to grab this brush and I'm going to go into ice cold. And I'm just going to run this along the lower lash line. That's pretty. Yes, I'm flinching this side because obviously I have no peripheral vision and the viewfinder's a long way off when I haven't got my contact lens in. And uh, the likelihood of me poking myself in the eye, regular viewers will know, happens quite a bit. Usually I manage to cover it, but a fair few of you eagle eyed popsies have uh, absolutely. Definitely seen it. Right, now this brush was from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. I love it, it's flat topped but it's chunky. Perfect. So I'm going to go into Seltzer, which is the other matte that I've not yet used. I'm going to use that just to gently buff that lower lash line out a little bit, just soften it slightly. That's quite nice. I feel like this is a really good sort of spring shade palette. I mean I know technically we're still in winter but this is it, it's kind of icy enough for winter but pretty enough to be spring. Does that make sense? I hope so. Probably doesn't. I mean I, I regularly don't make sense on this channel. Right this is a lip brush that I got from eBay about 10 years ago now probably. So I'm going to go into Play It Cool, which is the one that I said appeared to have less of a base shade. And I'm going to use that just in the inner corner and bring it around to blend in with my under eye shadow. Uh, regular, if you're wondering, if you're new and you're wondering why I don't put anything in my waterline, um, I have very, very sensitive eyes anyway, made worse by fibro. Um, they stream an awful, awful lot. Um, I'm going to put some of this under the brow as well, I think. Ooh, look at it. Am I brave enough to use this as a highlight? Am I going to end up with green cheeks? It's a very good question. Um, yeah, so if I put anything in my waterline, it just, my eye reacts really badly and just starts streaming. Um, that's super pretty. Right, I'm going to pause you for one last time and I will decide whether I'm going to risk it for a biscuit and put that all over my cheeks. Put some mascara on, choose a lippy, and I will, well, and do something with his hair, obviously. And I'll be back. Uh, don't go anywhere now. I am back. Okay. Uh, the lipstick I've used is an Anastasia bullet lipstick from their matte range called Peachy. Uh, the mascara is the Catrice Glamondol Waterproof Volume Mascara. This is a dupe for Benefits Bad Gal Bang, but it's cheaper and it's waterproof. And I did risk it for a biscuit and use the shade Play It Cool as my highlight. So, what do I think of this palette? Um, I like it, but on the eye... This one and this one 
once blended out look super similar. I noticed the same thing on the under eye, these two looked super similar. This one didn't come off, uh, sorry, this one didn't come off as dark as I thought it was going to be in the pan. Um, I like them, but I think with so many of the shadows looking so similar when you blend them out, it might actually reduce the amount of looks you can get with this particular palette. However, if you've got other green palettes, and we all know I've got hundreds of those, um, it could be a good one to pair with it. Um, you know, the I've got the Just My Luck palette, that would probably pair well with this. Um, I mean, I've got this Earth and Ocean from e.l.f. That I think would pair well with it. So I think... Um, don't get me wrong, it's a lovely palette. But as a standalone palette, I think some of the shades are just a little bit too similar. And that's something I've not seen on anybody else's reviews. They've, they've obviously chosen different shades to me. Um, so I'm actually quite pleased that I used the shades that I did. Um, just so that you could see just how similar they were when they were blended out. Because you always get honesty and fairness on this channel. One of the F's isn't just fair because I'm white as a pint of freshly poured milk. It's also because I'm very fair with my reviews. Um, but given the price of it, it's extremely cost effective. And if you are just starting off your collection or you're just starting to get into greens, this could be a nice, soft, gentle intro to the green spectrum for you. Um, and then maybe you'll feel brave enough to uh, properly dive in. Right. If you're one of my regular viewers, please double check you're still subscribed because my numbers this year are like a bloody roller coaster. Up, down, up, down, up, up, down. It's getting a tad boring, to be honest. Anyhow, if this is your first time here, hi, hello, welcome, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you've got this far through, I'm guessing you must have liked something that you saw. It would be awesome if you would like to join this 4F family. We are the nicest family on YouTube. And it's super easy to do that. You just hit that subscribe button, turn it from red to grey, and then hit the bell notification, choose all notifications, and hopefully YouTube will actually tell you when I upload another video. Speaking of which, I have got an awful lot of other films if you wanted to have a dive in and look back. Right, I think that's enough for me for this particular film. So, I will say, as I always do, You'll stay fabulous, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.